Hello, Transcended back here. In this video, we're going to go over projectile motion, the live equations that we work with under projectile motion. Okay, so what basically is projectile motion? So projectile motion involves um, a, an object or a body moving in two dimensions. For example, you throw a ball upwards. Okay, so as it will be going up, it will be moving in the x direction as well as in the y direction as it gets to go up. So that is two dimensions. So projectile motion is in two dimensions. And that's how it's different from uh, linear motion because it involves the study of motion in the x and the y direction at the same time. Okay, so what is very important to note that is when you have a ball, for example, at this point, you throw it upwards and it begins to go this way. Okay. So the motion in the Y is independent from the motion in the X. And we also note that the velocity in the X's is constant. Okay, it's constant throughout motion. The one in the Y, it changes because of um, gravitational acceleration. So in going up, we're going to consider our gravity to be negative and when coming down we're going to consider gravity to be to be positive and our gravity value that we're going to be working with is 9.8 meters per second squared okay so there are some equations that are very important that help us determine the important uh, things like the maximum height the time it takes to reach a maximum height the time of flight the time that it will take from this point to that end so this basically is um, is projectile motion. <coughs> okay, the symmetrical way. So there are three forms of projectile motion that we're going to talk about. Okay. So projectile motion is not free form motion. Free form motion involves something thrown vertically upwards, it goes on top and it comes back downwards straight without making any movement in the x direction. But with projectile, this same ball can go, it can make a movement in the x direction. So whenever you're talking about projectile motion, it's 2D, two-dimensional kind of motion that you're studying. So let's try to show where the equations come from. So remember the equations that we've been working with under motion are these three equations. So one, we know that our final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus uh, acceleration times time. Then we also know that our final velocity squared is equal to our initial velocity squared plus 2as, where s is distance or displacement. Then we also know that our s is actually equal to v naught plus half a t squared, where a is acceleration and t is time. So these very equations, we are going to convert them to projectile motion. So whenever you are dealing with projectile motion, where there is distance here, we are going to put height. Where there is acceleration, we are, we are going to put gravity. So A will become G. Then our distance will become the height there. Yeah. So A is becoming G. Okay, so we've changed the form of the equations there. Yeah. So I'll start with the first uh, form of uh, projectile motion. Where you have something moving symmetrical from this point it goes to the top and gets down again okay and let's say that is our h where the maximum height okay so there are some of the equations that we're going to be working with so i'll start with the first equation there so the first equation that is where we can get our formula for finding the height so it's very important that when something is going up as it goes, goes up, as it reaches the maximum height, it will stop moving in the y direction. It stops moving in the y direction. Meaning that the final velocity in the y is zero. Okay? So at that highest point, where yeah, we need to note that the final velocity in the y is going to be what? It's going to be zero. So if we plug in there where there is v final, we put a zero. So let me remove these other equations so that we have enough space. Okay, so put a zero there for the final one. Then the initial 
we just put V0 plus C. So we said when gravity are going upwards, is we are going to consider it to be negative. So it will be minus G2. Okay. So it's very important when something is being through is going upwards at a certain angle. So from our vectors, we know that the y component of this vector is going to be given by the velocity sine the angle. Then in the x, it's going to be v cos what? Theta. Cos theta. So what we've done is we've We've taken our velocity and then we've resolved it into the x and the y components. So, studying the maximum height, we're dealing with the y. So, where there's v0 there, we're going to put v sine theta because we're dealing with the y. So, 0 is equal to v sine theta minus g2. So, let the negative part go to the other side to become that. Right? So, our time is going to be v sine theta over what? Over gravity. So that is our formula that we are going to be using. So let me write it on top here. <coughs> so this formula is helps us to find the maximum, the time taken to reach a maximum point. Okay? It's in V sine theta over what? Over gravity. Okay. So now, what is very important to note as well is the time of flight. So when you look at something symmetrical like this, okay, the ball goes up, the maximum I it starts to come down again. Okay, so this is going to be symmetrical. So meaning that the time that it is going to take to reach a maximum height is the same time it's going to take to what? To go down. Okay. So the total time of flight in such a type of projector is given as you multiply what we have by two, since it's is twice. So time of fright is given as 2v sine theta over what? Over gravity. So what we've done is we've just multiplied the first one by 2 because it's twice that. So that is a very, very important equation as well. Okay. We got to a second equation where we are saying our h is equal to v naught t plus half g t squared. Okay, so this is the equation from linear motion. So this equation can help us to find um, to find the maximum height. Okay, so we know at the maximum height, we've already mentioned that at the maximum height, uh, the final velocity in the y is equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to plug in. Whenever we're dealing with y, we are saying the v naught at a certain angle, theta is going to be given as v sine theta multiplied by t. Okay? Then half gt squared plus half gt squared. Okay. Let's move, let's move, let's move. Okay. So we're coming up with a formula to help us find the um, the maximum height. Okay. So when you look at this one, it can work as it is. But let's find the simplest one, the simpler one. That doesn't require you to use time because there may be some cases where they've not given you time. Okay. So in a case where time is not given, the 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 more Beneficial equation is this one. V final squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2GH. Okay. So make H to be a subject. So V final is going to be 0 at the maximum point. V initial is going to be V sine theta squared. Gravity going up is negative. So it's negative G. And height. Uh, so we'll take the part with the height to the left hand side. So that it becomes 2gh. So if you square this, it's going to be v squared sine squared what? Theta. Okay. So our goal is to make h a subject. So it will be v squared sine squared theta divided by what? 
divided by, we are getting the 2G there, so 2G. So this formula is going to help you find the maximum height. So the equations that we've come up with is the time it takes you to reach a maximum height, the time of flight, and also the time it will take you to reach a maximum point. So it's not really a requirement that you should be remembering these equations. What is important is to understand where they're coming from. So they are all coming from the, the equations initially that we had. That's where they are all coming from. Another important equation that we work with is determining the when they ask you to find the range. So the range means that you're talking about the horizontal distance from that point to this point. So the formula that we work with, we are saying velocity in the x is going to be constant. Okay. So it's going to be the same. So assuming it is set at a certain angle, so the x component is going to be the velocity that you have cosine the angle. So therefore our range is given as velocity in the x multiplied by what? By the time. So if you use that, it becomes v cosine theta multiplied by time. So this equation is going to be helping us find the horizontal distance covered by a ball or a projectile. Okay. So that was the first form of um, projectile motion. How about a second form? So for a second form, it is where you at you at a certain height, then you decide to throw something up. Like that. Okay. Then the third one is usually you are at a certain point there. You just throw it directly down like that. So I'll start with the third one, then I'll come back to the second one. Because the second one is actually a combination of the last one. Okay. So let's start with something like this. You have Let's say a boy is at a certain building, then it is moving this way. Okay. So some of the calculations that are necessary here is they are going to be asking you to find uh, the range, meaning about the horizontal distance covered. They can also ask you to find uh, the time it will take to, to reach the, the, the bottom. So here we are going to work with free form motion. It's going to help us. Okay. So how is it going to help us? So in terms of um, the time it's going to take to reach uh, the bottom, what formula can we work with? Because here what we are noting is, uh, initially when setting there, the initial velocity in the y is zero because it is only moving in the x direction. So the velocity initially in the y is zero. Okay. So what happens if you go to a first equation, you're saying v final, is equal to v naught plus gt. So we are saying the v naught is zero. So our v final is going to be equal to zero. So the g is going to be negative. 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 Oh, so it's going down. It's going to be positive instead. So here, this is the equation that you're going to be working with to help you find the final velocity. You just look at the gravity and the time. Okay? Very, very important. So this one is the simplest kind of uh, projector. Okay. How about determining the, the maximum height? So how about if you go to this equation that you already know? Okay. So we already know that uh, our initial one is going to be what? It's going to be zero. So we are going to remain with 2gh. Okay. So assuming you've already determined the final velocity from the first equation, remember the first equation that we've come up with uh, we are saying our v final is actually equal to gravity multiplied by time. So assuming you've already found the final velocity, you're able to find the height by only saying it's v final squared divided by 2g. Okay. So these equations are going to be very helpful when it comes to this kind of projectile motion. Okay. So the last one, which is um, a bit complex because it combines all what we've talked about. Okay. So you have a ball coming from this side at a certain velocity, let's say maybe 10 meters per second. 
no. Basically, this is something different. Okay, you have something there. Then you are standing up there. Then you throw it upwards, like that. Then it gets down there. So what we have is something symmetrical. First of all, let me even make it symmetrical. The original projector that we know. This is symmetrical. So things like time, the maximum height are going to be very important. So how are they going to be very important? We are going to be combining things here. So I'll start with the maximum height. So the maximum height in this case, like we've determined from the initial equation, is going to be this v squared sine squared theta over what? Over 2g. Now we are going to add plus h. Okay, so that h is not part of the numerator, it's separate plus h. Why am I saying plus h? Because of this h. Okay, so the maximum height that we are determining is only from this point. It's this point to that point. That's the first formula which we had determined. So now it's going to require you to add even the, the building, the, the, the height of the building for you to get the maximum height in total. Okay, so that's the first equation. Take note of it. So now, what do you think is going to be the equation that you're go is going to help you find the, the time? The time of flight. Okay, what time of flight are you going to consider? So the time of flight is going to be given as a summation. So remember, first of all, say from this point to that point, it's the first projector that we talked about. The time is going to be to v sine theta over g. That's the first projector. Now, going down is free for motion. So the equation that we talked about is um, where we are saying v final is equal to gt. So if you make t to be the subject, it's going to be v final over what? Over g. Okay. So now, even before we get to this equation, what's very important to note that this the way it's going to be moving is this. So the time it's going to be this at this point, it's going to be moving with the same velocity that it had at A. So at B, it's going to have the same velocity. Okay. So now, we need to note that it's going to have an initial velocity at that point. Okay. It's going to have an initial velocity. So how is the initial velocity going to help us find the time it will take to reach a bottom. Okay. So the first thing that you're supposed to do is first of all find the final velocity using this equation. Okay. You find the final velocity. Okay. So how are you going to find the final velocity? You use the initial velocity that you are going to the initial velocity that it started with there is the one that it is going to have at B. So you plug in, then you plug in the gravity and the this height. Okay, so it's going to give you now the final velocity. So after you find the final velocity, it would now be up to you to get to. So after you find the final velocity, it's now up to you to get to this equation and find the time. Okay, so it's going to be, your time is going to be given as V final over what? Over gravity. So you can add that V final over gravity. So this equation is going to give us the total time of fright. Okay. So this video basically has given you the main main concepts that you need under different forms of projectile motion. So check out for the link in the description for a video that has covered practice questions on projectile motion. Thank you very much for watching once more. This is Transcended. Bye.